Okay, my friends, welcome back. We are now in Unit 7, which is about resource markets, um, and we are heading towards the end of the semester. This is the second to last unit. Um, unfortunately, it's usually the most difficult unit for students as well, um, not because the actual content's that difficult, but mostly because it's the least um, familiar to students, um, and students have the hardest time connecting it to their actual real lives. Um, so strap yourself in, um, we're going to handle it together. All right, so kind of place us in the course. Um, we've been living in this bottom box down here for a number of weeks now, this product market box. And again, this is the box where we as consumers are buyers and businesses are the sellers. This is the box that we're familiar with in our lives. Here's where we're moving to in, in this next unit, the resource market. Um, and up here, everything kind of gets flipped around. In fact, if you can simply think of the resource market as kind of the opposite of the product market, that'll help you along. Remember what resources are, the economic resources. There's four kinds of them, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability. So think of this box as where businesses go to get that stuff from us um, in order to make the goods and services that they're going to wind up eventually selling to us. All right, so the difference between the product and the resource market, again, is basically one of uh, opposites. In the product market, businesses were the sellers and households, us, we were the buyers. And in the resource market, we're gonna flip things around. We're the owners of resources. In a free market economy, in the end, people own everything. And businesses have to buy those resources from us if they wanna produce goods and services. So that's the first little switch or opposites. We become the sellers and businesses become the buyers in the resource market. Now the reason this stuff is important is uh, a few things. First off, what we're going to find is that it's the resource market that determines how much money people make. Um, and there are ethical issues involved with that. Secondly, understanding the resource market will enable us to understand which resources get used by various businesses and why they use certain combinations of resources. Third, from the business's uh, perspective, this is important stuff to know because it's going to help them to minimize costs. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to come across an ethical or policy uh, question or two along the way. Now, you might hear resource demand referred to as quote-unquote derived demand. In other words, the demand for resources is called derived demand because the demand for resources is derived from the demand for the goods or services that those resources produce. In other words, we as consumers don't really want iPad workers in and of themselves or iPad uh, machines, things that make iPads in and of themselves. We want those things as a society because they make iPads. The resources are essentially a means toward an end. And if we had some magical genie box that could just make us products, we wouldn't really want resources in the first place. So the demand for resources derived from the demand for the products that they produce. And as a result of that, you'll sometimes hear resource demand called derived demand. It's important to know that term. It pops up on the AP exam. And what we're going to see is that the demand for a resource is just, yet again, another kind of marginal benefit, marginal cost decision. In other words, what kind of resources we uh, businesses use and how much they use is just a marginal benefit, marginal cost decision. So for example, let's say we have a worker whose name is Brian, and I'm in some business and I'm thinking about hiring Brian. Let's think about the thought process that I might go through in terms of whether I'm going to decide to hire him or not. Now, in the most general terms, the benefit of hiring Brian would be whatever money he would bring into my business that I wouldn't see if I didn't hire him. In other words, the benefit of Brian is the additional revenue he's going to bring into my business. In terms of the cost of Brian, that's pretty clear. The cost of Brian would be whatever it would cost me to hire him. In this case, because he's a worker, I might call that his wage. So in hiring Brian, or thinking about whether to hire Brian, I'm essentially thinking about how much money he's going to bring in versus what it's going to cost to hire him. Now we're going to give names to those concepts. We're going to call the benefit of Brian his marginal revenue product, or MRP. 
And again, there's the word marginal there, which means what it always means, additional or change. So marginal revenue product is how much more revenue I'm going to get if I hire Brian. We're going to call the cost of Brian his marginal resource cost, or MRC. And again, there's a marginal there. That marginal resource cost, as we're going to see, is how much more it's going to cost me, what it's going to add to my costs as a business if I hire Brian. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about those two things. First off, marginal revenue product, or MRP. Conceptually, it's how much more revenue a business will earn if it uses one more unit of a resource, like a worker or one more acre of land or any other kind of resource. Alternatively, you can simply think of it as what a certain resource is worth to a business. Now, there are a couple of formulas you need to know in order to determine MRP, and we'll start with the first and easier one. MRP is equal to marginal product times the price of the product. In other words, let's say I hire Brian and he adds five units of production to whatever it is I'm producing. That would be his marginal product, right? How much more stuff I produce as a result of hiring Brian. So let's say he would add five units, his marginal product. If I could sell that product for whatever, $3, the price of the product, then what Brian's worth to me is essentially $15. I'm going to see 15 more dollars in revenue coming into my cash register as a result of hiring Brian. Now we're going to use this formula if the firm in question is selling in a perfectly competitive product market. In other words, if price never changes, if I can keep selling the product for $3 no matter how much or how little I produce, we're going to use this formula, marginal product times the price of the product. Alternatively, if we're not in a perfectly competitive product market, if price changes as production changes, we can use the second formula, which, by the way, we can also use in a perfectly competitive product market. But if we're in an imperfectly competitive product market, we can only use the second formula. The formula is marginal revenue product is equal to the change in total revenue divided by the change in resource quantity. Or in words, how much more money is coming into my cash register if I hire one more unit of a resource. So here's an example. Let's say I'm producing whatever, and I've produced zero units. Total product, my output will be zero. Marginal product is irrelevant to talk about. Let's say I'm selling this product for $2. So no revenue coming in. I haven't produced anything. So far, so good. Let's say that if I hire one person, total product or quantity goes up to seven. Well, that first person's marginal product is seven. He's made seven more things than were made before. And if I could sell that product for $2, my total revenue is going to be $14. $14 worth of stuff sold. So if I wanted to use the first formula, and notice that I can use the first formula here because price is not changing, we must be in a perfectly competitive product market. To use the first formula, I would simply take the marginal product of that worker, which is 7, multiply it by the price of the product, which is $2, and that gives me a marginal revenue product of $14. So if I hire that first person, I'll see 14 more dollars in my cash register than I would see if I didn't hire that person. That's what that first person is worth to me, his or her marginal revenue product. Now I can also use the second formula and I'll get the same result. The second formula take, says take the change in total revenue and divide it by the change in the resource quantity. So here's my change in total revenue. I went from $0 to $14, so the change is 14. Divided by the change in resource quantity, I went from 0 workers to 1 worker, so the change was 1. 14 divided by 1 is equal to $14. Again, I get the same result using either formula. Okay, as for marginal resource cost, as I mentioned before, conceptually, it's how much it's going to add to the cost for a business to add or hire one additional unit of a resource. So we're going to use this formula for marginal resource cost. It's the change in total cost divided by the change in resource quantity. Again, how much are my costs going to go up if I hire one more worker or add one more acre of land to my business? 
Now, if you remember way back at the beginning of the year, the rule for doing whatever, anything, was to keep going as long as the marginal benefit was greater than the marginal cost. There were gains involved if that was true. We're going to take that same idea but now apply it to this situation. The rule for employing resources is going to be to keep on hiring as long as the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. And again, here the marginal benefit is marginal revenue product and the marginal cost is marginal resource cost. So our rule is going to be keep hiring, keep adding workers or acres of land as long as the MRP of that resource is greater than the MRC of that resource. And optimally, we'll go up to the point where they're equal. That will ensure that we've hired every unit of a resource where there's a gain involved. So to apply that rule, let's take our worker again. His name is Brian, last name Simpson. And let's talk about different situations. So what if his marginal revenue product was $20 and his marginal resource cost was $15? Well, obviously, MRP is greater than MRC. If I hire this guy, Brian, I'll see $20 going into my cash register and it'll only cost me $15 to get that $20. This kind of worker is going to be a gain. I'm going to win $5 essentially if I hire this worker. And since his MRP is greater than his MRC, I should hire that worker. Good worker. On the other hand, if Brian came up to me and this was the situation, MRP of $32 and an MRC of $48, he would suck. His MRP is less than his MRC, meaning that it's going to cost more to hire him than what he's going to add to my business. That would be a bad worker. And in fact, I suggest that if you know anyone by the name of Brian Simpson, you should put a big fat red X right over their face. It's the only thing to do. All right, that's it for this one. See you next time. Honey, or let's go play. I don't feel like it. Why are you always in such a bad mood? I have a nail in my anus. Oh.